Here we're going to look at solving a first order uh, system with a uh, impulse input. All right. Um, so this should be familiar from uh, from lab investigations. We're going to look at the case where we have a constant input voltage that's suddenly applied across a capacitor and resistor in series, and we're going to look at the uh, voltage that's developed across the resistor as a function of time. Okay. Um, so to do this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, uh, I'm again going to perform a node balance. I'm going to look at the current uh, balance out of this node, which I'm going to call V. Um, and that's going to be the potential, or V out, uh, with respect to this uh, reference node right here. So performing uh, Kirchhoff's current law, or using Kirchhoff's current um, law, we know that the current through the capacitor plus the current through the resistor has to sum to zero. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is use uh, the current and voltage relationships for the uh, capacitor and the resistor uh, to solve to be able to solve for the voltage. All right, so we know that for a capacitor, the current voltage relationship is the capacitance times the rate of change of the potential across the capacitor. So once this switch gets connected here, once we complete this circuit, the potential across the capacitor is going to be the difference between if we're assuming current is going is leaving the node, we're going to assume that this node is at a higher potential than the input. So it's going to be V or V out minus V in. Okay. And the current that's uh, going to leave the node through the resistor is going to be um, the output voltage or the node, um, the, the potential at this node, minus zero, divided by the resistance. And that has to sum to zero. Okay, so doing some rearranging here, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the derivative of this. Both V out and V in can be functions of time. So it's going to be C D V out DT minus C D V in dt plus v out over r is equal to zero. And doing a little more algebraic uh, rearrangement here, I'm going to multiply through by r, bring the input term to the other side of the equation, and what I wind up with is rc dv out dt uh, plus v out is equal to RC times the derivative of the input voltage with respect to time. Okay, since we're suddenly throwing this switch, um, we're, we can model the input voltage as being, as a function of time, as being some constant value, Vn, multiplied by the unit step function because we're going to say at time zero we're going to close the switch all of a sudden at that time this constant voltage is going to be applied across the circuit. But here, in our first order differential equation, the forcing function is not the input voltage as a function of time, it's the derivative of the input voltage as a function of time. So the derivative of this input voltage function is going to be this constant. And you'll recall from class, we talked about the derivative of the step function is defined as this thing called the impulse function. Okay, so our differential equation that we need to solve is going to be RC dV out dt plus V out is equal to RC times this, uh, sorry, RC times the constant Vn times this impulse function. Okay, now how do we solve this? Well, we have to solve this non-homogeneous differential equation. Um, first of all, we have to find the homogeneous solution, and then we have to find the particular solution. So let's go ahead and find the homogeneous solution, and then we'll talk about this particular solution and how we find the particular solution for a, um, for a impulse input. Okay, to find the homogeneous solution, 
what we need to do is find the characteristic equation and set the forcing function equal to zero. So the characteristic equation for this is going to be RC lambda, or our differential operator, plus this is lambda raised to the zero because we're taking the zeroth order derivative and that's going to be equal to zero which tells us that our eigenvalue or the value of the differential operator is negative one over RC. Okay, so that also tells us that our homogeneous solution needs to take the form of some unknown constant A times E to the negative um, or excuse me, e to the lambda times time, which is equal to some unknown constant, a times e to the negative t over rc. Okay, so now we have to look for the particular solution. So the approach to finding the particular solution for a um, impulse input is to find the particular solution associated with this differential equation as if the differential equation had a step input. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to find the particular solution for this differential equation. Oops, sorry, that should be the unit step function there. All right, so as if the forcing function, as if we replaced this impulse function with the step function. Okay, so, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of that result um, that we find to come up with a particular solution for this case. Okay, um, so remember that the unit step function is basically uh, a value of 1 after time is equal to 0 so that turns this into basically a constant forcing function after time is equal to 0. Alright so the constant uh, is going to be RC times VN. Alright so to find a particular solution we make a guess at it and we make an educated guess by guessing that um, the particular solution is going to take the um, same form as the forcing function, which we determine in this case to be some constant. And I'm going to call that unknown constant b. I'm going to determine the value of that unknown constant by substituting this assumed particular solution back into this differential equation. So to do that, I need the derivative of my assumed particular solution with respect to time. Since I've assumed it's a constant, my derivative is 0. And I'm going to substitute this back into the original differential equation. Substituting back into the original differential equation gives me RC times the derivative of my assumed particular solution, which is 0. Okay, so that term goes away. We don't need it. Doesn't mean anything to us. Plus the assumed form of the particular solution, which is our constant is equal to RCVN. Okay, so that tells us that our particular solution is going to be RC times VN, the constant value VN. All right, so the total solution um, for a step input would thus be Our solution, our total solution, would be the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution, which in this case would be a e to the negative t over r c plus r c v n. Okay. Now, um, to uh, to solve um, for the uh, the impulse response, um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have to take the derivative of uh, this with respect to time. Okay, so for our, uh, for the impulse input, we'll 
take the derivative of this. The derivative of this is going to be negative a over rc times e to the negative t over rc. The derivative of this term is, a, it, since this is a constant, when we take the derivative of it to find the impulse input response, that term is going to go away. All right, so a is an unknown constant, r and c are both constants. I'm going to wrap those up into a new constant, which I'm going to call um, d. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the negative. I'm just going to call this some other unknown constant, e to the negative t over rc. All right. So that's going to be the, the response. Now we need to determine um, what, uh, what, what the initial value of this is going to, going to have to be. Um, so in order to determine the initial uh, value, um, we need to uh, determine the initial condition or the initial voltage across the resistor. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. This is always the most difficult part about um, our differential equation solutions, is determining uh, what the initial condition is for this voltage output. Okay, so if we think about it, we need to look at what happens both before and after uh, the switch opens, or excuse me, the switch closes in this case. Um, before the switch closes, we have an output voltage of uh, zero volts because there's no um, capacity, excuse me, there's no current through the resistor. Uh, we're also going to assume that there's no charge on the capacitor at time zero. Uh, so if there's no charge on the capacitor, um, the voltage across that capacitor uh, is zero as well. Okay, so now um, as soon as we close this switch, as soon as we make contact with this switch, we knew that at time zero the voltage, or sorry, we knew right before time zero, right before we closed that switch, the voltage across this capacitor was zero. All right, from our properties of capacitors, we know that capacitors cannot change their voltage instantaneously. So even though we close this switch, the instant that we close this switch, the potential across this capacitor still has to be zero. If the potential across this capacitor is still zero, what does the voltage across the resistor have to be? Well, from Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that all of the energy that we supply to the circuit has to be dropped or, or lost across the individual elements. So if no potential is lost across the capacitor, that means all of the supplied potential has to be dropped by the resistive element. So that's what tells us that at time zero, right after we close that switch, the output voltage or the voltage across the resistor is going to have to be the same thing as the input voltage. Right, so that becomes our initial condition. And the reason, again, is that the capacitor um, is, uh, is has no potential across it initially, and the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So as soon as we close that switch, um, there's still going to be no potential across the capacitor. All of the voltage to uh, satisfy Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop has to be dropped by the resistor. Okay, so now with that initial condition in hand, we can solve for uh, what the value of this unknown constant d is going to be. All right, so we know that v out at time zero is equal to v in, and we also uh, can evaluate this uh, function for time is equal to zero, which will give us the value of d. All right, so d is equal to v in. So for this uh, case that we're considering right here. The output voltage uh, as a function of time is going to be the input voltage multiplied by e to the negative t over rc. Right, so this will give us a function that starts uh, at time zero at a value of vn and slowly decreases over time back down to zero. This is how we uh, find the solution for a step input, excuse me, for a impulse input. Again, the procedure is to solve as though the uh, input were a step function, and then we're going to take the derivative of that combined result.